I'm joined now by Michael Stringer, co-founder and managing partner of Datascope Analytics. Michael, thank you so much for being with us. Oh, thanks for having me. Your strata session is titled uh, Design, Transparency, and Big Data in Civil Litigation. How does big data apply to the legal community? Uh, so I'm uh, not a lawyer. Okay, <laughs> so we got that, well, that's clear, right? <laughs> yeah. So I, I don't know if I can speak there. for the broader legal community, but there is a huge uh, push right now in the phase of civil litigation where you need to provide uh, documents to the to the other side about what might be relevant for the case. Right. There's a big push to try to reduce costs in that phase by doing a lot of it with uh, automatically. Uh, the idea being you don't want to, like, instead of having an attorney sit and read uh, an email about the weekend barbecue uh, and decide that it's not relevant to the mm -hmm. case, that's obviously an expensive way to decide, uh, decide that a document is not relevant. And so doing that automatically is something that's uh, becoming much more widely applied in uh, that particular part of the litigation process. How common is that? Uh, how common is it that people use that technology? Yeah. Uh, it's becoming more common. Yeah. So, uh, as it turns out, uh, attorneys are risk averse. <laughs> uh, and so, adopting new technology is something that really needs to be kind of uh, precedent needs to be set uh, with people using it. So I think it's becoming a lot more common. Uh, in the last couple of years, I think it's really starting to become a term that, or you'll, you'll hear the term technology-assisted review. Oh, is that what it is? Okay. Uh, a lot of times. Uh, there's lots of different words for it uh, that people are, are using, but more or less uh, in the last couple of years, it's a technology that a lot of people are becoming aware of and experimenting with using uh, I, I don't think, as far as I can tell, it's not particularly widespread yet. Mm -hmm. it's, it's but it's starting to get some traction there. there. Okay. Yeah. How do attorneys compare to other data adopters? Do you, I, I think I know the answer to this question, but <laughs> yeah. would you consider them behind the curve on that? Um, behind the curve sounds so negative. Uh, With the curve? <laughs> <laughs> I, w I would say, I mean, I already mentioned they're very risk averse. Almost as a profession, I think. Uh, law is kind of designed to move slowly. Sure. It's, you don't want to jump the gun right. and, and change right. laws. Uh, so I think that there's a lot of inertia in terms of really being sure that everything is kind of rock solid and defensible in court. Uh, so in terms of that, I would say maybe behind the curve, mm -hmm. uh, but very willing and open to considering ways to to improve this process because ultimately uh, attorneys they want to try cases right. and when this kind of technicality just giving documents becomes something that that makes it so that they have to settle because it's cost prohibitive it, it makes it so that they can't do their job and right. so they're very very welcoming towards something that can help them actually practice law instead of uh, have to sift through documents. It does seem like there's a pretty clear value for them. In it, absolutely, right? yeah, absolutely. Right. Last question for you. The education that attorneys are going through to uh, acquire some competency with these types of tools and with the data science space, do you feel that that could also benefit other professions, maybe ones that also share some risk aversion? Uh, absolutely. I mean, uh, we, we meaning at Datascope, uh, find have those kind of little chunks of the project that we've worked with in the legal space that are extremely uh, pertinent in other application areas. So I, I think that there's lots of tools. I mean, there's nothing that's kind of like uh, an obvious, like a product that exists that's going to be applied yeah. in a new area. Um, but I think that some pieces of that and, and some of the, the techniques that are getting developed in the space are clearly something that will translate to uh, other industries. Right. Well, thanks for being with us. Yeah, thank you.